Well, it's the end of the Advent season with this fifth and final contemplation on the Nativity story, the story of Christ's birth. And this is the one I have been the most excited about as I've been researching and preparing these episodes. <clears throat> I'm Ben, Ben Avery, one of the hosts of the Strangers and Aliens podcast, and this Advent series is a special series for me. Uh, Strangers and Aliens is as a podcast about the intersection of our spiritual life and our creative life, uh, when we explore topics like these, we use um, a dash of, of sci-fi flavor. And so for this series, I've been specifically using Star Wars to help illustrate some of the concepts that the Advent season and the Advent candles has brought up. In this series, we've talked about hope, we've talked about faith and joy and peace, uh, and as we've been doing so, we've been following the desire for the Messiah that found fulfillment when Gabriel announced to Mary that Christ would be born, and the announcement to the shepherds then was also given to them that the Christ was born and had been born and would bring peace on earth, a peace in the conflict between the creation, us, humanity, and the creator, God. Today's topic is light, and if we were lighting candles, and maybe next year if I do something like this, I'll think ahead and actually, you know, get candles to light. Although that, I don't know, that might feel a little weird to me doing it on, on camera. But anyway, if we were lighting candles, this one is sometimes called the Christ candle. It's also called the light candle, because Christ is the light of the world. The word Advent means arrival. And John writes an interesting and poetic and theologically rich description of the arrival of Christ. Now, he doesn't tell the birth story. Uh, in fact, as I was studying for this series, uh, I was writing both for this one and for a family devotional podcast I created for my church. Um, as I was writing this, I was struck by two things. And I love being struck by things. I was teaching the children in my Sunday morning services, and I realized I have probably heard and or taught and written about this story in the high hundreds of times, like seven, eight, nine hundred times, or maybe even into the thousands, like thousand, one thousand one hundred and two or something like that. Um, now, this is because I've taught about the Nativity in multiple weeks doing D December series, you know, four-week four, four week long series every year for almost 20 years now, not to mention the, the bunch of comics that I've written about it and the many, many movies and other retellings of the stories I've watched and listened to and all the sermons that are a part of going to church and hearing things on the radio. You know, this is something that if it's repeated too much, though, I feel like it can possibly lose its power. The Christmas story can lose its majesty and lose even its meaning. Now, it's on me, it's on us, it's on you to not lose that. So I always, uh, not just at Christmas, but I always try and encourage people to find something new when they're confronting a story that they know well. Find something new. Find an application that applies to you now that didn't apply to you in the past when you heard the story. Let it speak to you anew. And not let it become something that's rote or routine or worse, mundane. Anyway, the first thing I was struck by is that typically when you think of the, the nativity story, it, you think of it only appearing in two of the gospels, Matthew's gospel, which focuses on Joseph's story and then jumps ahead to the visit from the Magi. And then there's Luke's story, which tells the story of Mary and her interaction with Elizabeth and the arrival in Bethlehem and the shepherds and the following all the Jewish traditions with Jesus when he was a newborn. And if, as some say, the genealogy found in Luke is actually Mary's family's genealogy and the geneal genealogy found in Matthew is actually Joseph's, uh, you basically have one account, Luke's, fo focusing on Mary's story, Jesus's mother's story. And the other account, Matthew's, is focusing in on Jesus's adoptive father's story, Joseph. Even without the genealogies, it's, it's focusing on those stories. And then there's the book of John. There is no nativity account there, but there kind of is. With Matthew and Luke telling the story of Jesus and his earthly parents, John tells the story of Jesus and his father, his heavenly father. So I'm actually, I'm going to read the whole account from John. It's beautiful. I love it. And as I read it, just listen to this, the descriptions of Christ and the description of his message, or his mission and his relationship to the world and especially consider the parts that John wrote dealing with light. 
You see, that's my second epiphany as I discovered, as I studied this. I discovered that John used a lot of light imagery in his gospel and also quoted Jesus when he talked about light quite a bit. So here it goes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him, and apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was created through him and yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of natural descent, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him and exclaimed, This is the one of whom I said, The one coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. Indeed, we have all received grace upon grace from his fullness. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God the one and only Son, who is himself God and is at the Father's side, he has revealed him. Now, Jesus did not begin to exist as a child laid in a manger. No, he was never just a baby. And he came into the world to be a light in the darkness. Now, seven different times in the book of John, Jesus has conversations where he compares himself to light. In chapter 3, he says, This is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it, so that his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. In chapter 8, he says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. And there are more. Like I said, there's multiple conversations where Jesus talks about this. Jesus, the light of the world. He came to rescue the world from darkness. Now, here's where my mind goes when I think about light and darkness especially when Star Wars is brought up. Uh, You probably go there too. There's the light side of the force and there's the dark side of the force. Now, I mean, Star Wars, it has its own Messiah narrative. There's this prophecy of the chosen one who is meant to bring balance to the force, whatever that means. Now, to me, it does mean one interesting thing. And it's a trap that I see many people, well, well-meaning people fall into. Um, It's the duology of good and evil, and God and Satan even. Balance to the force means that the light side and the dark side are side by side, equal and opposing energies. They're yin and yang. It's like uh, Newton's third law. It's it's karma. And in the context of Star Wars, sure, it it works. Um, I've mentioned this before, and something I had never thought of concerning Anakin bringing balance to the force is that he went through and destroyed or very nearly destroyed both sides of the organized force users. Now, I freely admit that there may be some expanded universe stories or something or other that might make my observation invalid. 
But as far as is on screen in the movies, he took down the Jedi, or at least was a big part of it happening. And then years later, he killed the last Jedi, Obi-Wan. Not long after that, he killed the last Sith. All that was left when Anakin perished was Luke, who may have been a Jedi, but who was not part of the uh, the institutionalized Jedi structure. The whole point narratively that we want is for good to triumph over evil. It's what we as the audiences want. It's what we get. And it's what we long for. That's, that's why they give it to us. So when the force becomes something that's meant to be balanced, the dark side and the light side, and they have equal power and influence, and, and they should have equal power and influence based on the force's universal laws of spiritual science or whatever, it rings hollow. At least karma, which is sort of a spiritual version of, of Newton's third law, while possibly maintaining the equality of good and evil and the duology there, uh, it leans into encouraging good. It says, do good things to get good rewards, and then do bad things and you'll get bad consequences. The action, good or bad, creates the equal and opposite reaction. But here's the thing about Christ coming as a light. He wasn't bringing balance or anything like that. No, he was coming to wipe away darkness, to obliterate sin's stranglehood on humanity. Karma? Forget about karma. The deserved reaction to our sinful action is nullified by what Christ did when he fulfilled his mission. In fact, you know, it's Christmas time, so let's look at the Santa Claus narrative. He's making a list, checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. God has a list too, uh, a naughty list. And who's on the naughty list? All of us, every single one of us. On the nice list, it's just Jesus. With sin, none of us deserve to be on the nice list. But God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. As Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Balance? Psst. If we're looking at a teeter-totter, you know, balancing good and evil, Jesus jumped on the good end and launched evil way up into the stratosphere. It's not balance. It's destruction. Complete destruction. He blew up the death star of sin. <clears throat> So I hope this is an encouragement to you. This whole series is kind of a, an experiment, and, and hopefully it's, it's caused you to think about things in a new way or provided some sort of insight or enlightenment. Uh, but what I, I want to just really emphasize here, the, the last thing I want to say, the last thing I want anyone listening to this series to hear and remember is that Jesus came to bring light so you don't have to walk in darkness. You don't have to walk in darkness. You don't have to be held down by sin. You don't have to be separated from God by sin because of what Jesus did. He loves you. He loves you. He's, he would do anything for you, and he proved it. He, he gave his life. He gave his life. So I hope there's been some encouragement. I hope there's been some sort of something that might say, hey, I never thought of that, or I really needed to hear that. And so let us know if, if, that, if that has happened, if that's occurred. And I just want to thank you so much for, for being a part of this with me. And also say, you know, you, if you want to listen to the other episodes in this series, you can just go to strangersandaliens.com slash advent, and you'll find the entire five episodes of, of the series there. Um, and, and beyond that, uh, you can go to facebook.com slash strangers and aliens and join our conversation there. And um, I, I, again, just want to thank you so much for listening. And, and like I said, I hope this has been some sort of encouragement. If nothing else, I have heard from a couple people saying, I thanks, you know, needed to hear that kind of thing. That's been great. That's been wonderful. It's also been fun for me to, to explore. And like I said last time, I've been preaching to myself a little bit here. These are things that I've needed to hear. But this light discussion, this is a bigger thing than, than uh, I think it's probably the biggest thing. What light does, light illuminates. 
Light allows you to see. Light exposes. When you have a dark room that you're walking through, and this is something, this is an example I gave in the family devotional podcast I do for my church. When you're walking in a dark room, you can't see. You might bump into something. You might trip over something. And for me, in my house, it's probably Lego that I'm going to step on with my barefoot. And that hurts. And why? Darkness. You turn the light on, and suddenly everything is revealed. You see things that weren't able to be seen before. You see details you weren't able to see before. And we want to walk in the light. Jesus came to bring light into the darkness, to make it so we don't have to walk in the darkness anymore. And the more you spend time with him, the more light you're going to have, and the more you're going to see. And beyond that, people are going to see his light in you. They're going to see his light in you. And like I said, he's not bringing balance to anything. He is destroying sin. In Star Wars, it's cool, you know. But even so, with the balance of the force and those equal and side-by-side, light side, dark side, we want a narrative that gives us an awesome ending. We want a narrative that says good is going to triumph over evil. And that's what the Christmas story is. It's the ultimate story of good triumphing over evil. Unfortunately, that evil is within us. <laughs> but it's been destroyed. It has been defeated. Christ was victorious. And now we have a new advent. And that new advent is as we wait for him to come again. <clears throat> Again, I thank you for listening. I thank you for spending time with me here to uh, just sit back and think about this Christmas story. Have a merry, merry Christmas. Have a happy new year. And Godspeed.